It's crazy to think that just one year ago, I was one, walking into a theater, and two, about to watch what Disney Lucasfilm called the end of the Skywalker saga. What they didn't seem to understand is that for most fans, just like me, the Skywalker saga ended in 1983 with Return of the Jedi. That's the movie where Luke Skywalker faced his fears, overcame his anger, to defy the Emperor, and where Anakin Skywalker's redemption story played out, as he fulfilled his destiny and defeated the Sith. That, to me, was a proper finale for the Skywalker name. There's been a lot of talk and rumors lately about Disney Lucasfilm possibly decanonizing the sequel trilogy due to the backlash that it's received. That, to me, is a contradiction in itself, because you can't say this is the definitive end to the Skywalker saga out of one side of your mouth, and then from the other side of your mouth basically say that this never happened. I don't think it can be undone, and I don't really think that Disney would ever do that, because that would basically be admitting that they made a mistake, and we all know that they're not going to do that. I also believe that it's further confirmation that Disney never had a plan to begin with. If there's any movie in this trilogy that's an even bigger example of that than The Last Jedi, it's The Rise of Skywalker. It was obvious that the things that were set up in The Force Awakens were completely undone by The Last Jedi, and it was done on purpose. Then they doubled down on their incompetence and basically made a bigger movie just to undo everything that happened in The Last Jedi. So instead of having a great three-part story, you have these three individual stories that feel very disjointed. It's really remarkable that all the resources that Disney has, that they weren't able to come up with a cohesive story for three movies that doesn't shit all over everything that came before. It. But I guess that happens when you don't care about the source material. They had a virtual layup with the Luke Skywalker character. It would have delivered fan service that they could have profited off of for many years to come, and they just squandered that opportunity. They literally couldn't pull off the most obvious win. They choked, essentially. So after the reaction to The Last Jedi, they brought back J.J. Abrams to basically save the franchise. A man that's proven that he doesn't have a creative bone in his body, and that he simply recreates other people's work, or has a tendency to fill his films with these gimmick mystery boxes that sometimes get resolved and sometimes don't. But in Lucasfilm's mind, J.J. was the guy to restore the franchise to its previous glory and bring back those fans that they pissed off with The Last Jedi. So J.J. has the reins again, and what's the first creative decision? decision he makes. He decides to bring back Emperor Palpatine from the dead in the most vague way possible. He's a fan favorite villain for sure, and I'm sure that was part of the thought process, but by using Palpatine to try and bring back fans, you're essentially undoing the events of the films that made us fans. I really don't think he thought this through. Then again, I don't think anything in the sequel trilogy really had a lot of thought behind it. Palpatine's inclusion in this film undoes Anakin's redemption story from Return of the Jedi, and it effectively gives that same triumph to Rey, a character Character that no one likes, and they really thought that this was a good idea. His existence in this movie also verifies that they have failed in the creative process to create a character worthy enough to be the adversary for the final film in the saga. Kylo Ren can't be that character because Rey has already defeated him. And since then, Rey has gotten exponentially more powerful, so the likelihood of Kylo Ren being a worthy adversary to her now is even less. This is an all-around failure to create compelling characters, so they had to return to an already established George Lucas creation in order to make this story feel legit. And guess what? It didn't work. You pretty much know from the opening crawl exactly what type of movie The Rise of Skywalker is going to be. Palpatine is announcing his return to the galaxy through this transmission. This announcement, in effect, ends up supplying our heroes with a very specific countdown to the final order, which is basically Palpatine's plan to take over once again. Now, if you're Palpatine, wouldn't a surprise return yield better results? You could basically catch the Resistance sleeping because they have no idea, one, that you're still alive, and they have no idea that you somehow amassed this large army and built a ridiculously huge fleet of mini Death Stars. So what exactly is the point of him announcing his return? Is it to get Kylo Ren or Rey's attention? Considering they use the Force to basically explain every other dumb plot point in this movie, this would have been the one time that it would have made sense for him to use the Force to basically influence them or lure them to him. There would be no need to go through all this nonsense about finding Sith Wayfinders. 
The only reason these wayfinders exist is because J.J. Abrams needed a way to fill out the two and a half hour runtime. And he's not creative enough to come up with a story that uses that time more wisely and efficiently. Basically what I'm getting at is that Palpatine's plan in this movie makes absolutely no sense to me. Also in the opening crawl is the mention of Rey training. Something that was highly criticized in the previous movies was Rey's lack of training. So again, this movie simply exists to retroactively undo the movie that came before it. And to top it all off, Leia is the one training her, someone who didn't even complete her own training. But she is the closest thing we have left to a Jedi, if only we had an all-powerful Jedi in the previous movie that could teach Rey a few things. I feel something. You feel it? Yes, I feel it. That's the Force. Really? Wow, it must be really strong oh, with you. I've never felt any... Ow! But Rey don't need no man to teach her anything, because of course she's inexplicably learned some new tricks like Force healing. How could she possibly know how to do this? I know for a fact that Leia isn't advanced enough to know how to do that and to teach her. The dead Jedi are clearly not speaking to her. I suppose it could have been the Jedi textbook she's reading, but they don't really address that throughout the course of the film, so I'm going to assume that wasn't the reason. Based on how the end of the movie plays out, it's revealed that Jedi have become the equivalent of Jet Li in The One. I am Eula! I'm nobody's bitch! You are mine. Basically, Rey has all the abilities that a Jedi has ever had because all of the Jedi are in her. Giggity. Sounds good on paper, but anyone with half a brain knows this was a quick fix done by the filmmakers to try to explain how Rey was able to do the things she was able to do. How she was able to use the Jedi mind trick only after learning about the Force a couple of hours ago. Or defeat the highly trained Kylo Ren in her first lightsaber fight. Any power a Jedi has ever had was instantly downloaded into a Palpatine once they all died. The opening crawl continues, and yes, I'm still on the opening crawl. It also states that upon hearing Palpatine's transmission, Kylo Ren takes it upon himself to seek him out and kill him, simply because he views Palpatine as a threat to his power. Again, trying to retroactively explain why he inexplicably killed Snoke for no apparent reason. And don't give me he's a Sith and that's what Sith do, because it's made abundantly clear in The Force Awakens that Kylo Ren and Snoke are 100% not Sith. Basically, all they're trying to do is give us a reason other than subverting expectations. So basically, The Rise of Skywalker exists to give Ryan Johnson a big fuck you. A Jedi's weapon deserves more respect. Fuck you! <laughs> the opening moments of the movie feature a Robo Palpatine basically lifting bajillions of Star Destroyers out of the ground using the Force. And the end of the film features him using Force Lightning to incapacitate a whole fleet of ships. If you are this powerful and basically able to bring yourself back from the dead, then why hide at all? Why have a plan to transfer your life force into someone else? This is basically God-tier Palpatine, and he never struck me as a person who was willing to give up his powers, no matter what that person's last name is. Oh, and they also mentioned that Snoke was basically a clone, and there's a comment made that cloning is a dark secret that only the Sith know about. So we're just going to ignore that the Clone Wars ever happened then, I guess. This movie also features the debut of lightspeed skipping, a maneuver that no longer requires you to make calculations before jumping to hyperspace. Traveling through hyperspace ain't like dust and crops, boy. Without precise calculations, we'd fly right through a star or bounce too close to a supernova and then it injured trip real quick, wouldn't it? Another new addition is you can apparently transfer solid items through force skyping. I guess because plot? This movie is filled with these one in a million chance encounters. Here goes. The group meets up with Lando randomly in the middle of the desert during a rave, who tells them about a ship. They randomly crash in the exact spot they need to fall through the sand, so Rey can find a dagger, and she heals a sandworm, which reveals the exit to the cave, and then she proceeds to accidentally kill Chewie, but she doesn't really kill Chewie. She senses Chewie, so they go to the ship where Chewie is being held, but not without a magic medallion given to Poe by his Destiny cosplayer girlfriend that they happened to run into on a planet while they were trying to find a droid blacksmith. I'm glad that all worked out for them. C-3PO is about to have his memory wiped, because that's the only way he can translate the Sith text. And he's surrounded by characters who don't give a shit about him, because they don't know him well enough to give a shit about him. But for some reason, he calls them his friends. The one character that could have been there to make this moment seem more significant 
would have been R2-D2, but he was put on the shelf for BB-8 and Dio. That's right, Dio, the droid whose only purpose is to sell toys that nobody is going to buy. Plus, come to find out that R2-D2 had C-3PO's memory backed up anyway, so all this amounted to nothing. Then we have our first four Skype lightsaber duel. It's about as impersonal as this entire trilogy has been. Next, we get two very unsatisfying reveals, almost back to back. It's revealed that Hux is a spy for the Resistance, and he is soon killed off afterwards. And Kylo tells Rey that she's Palpatine's granddaughter. But more on that later. They try to reestablish Finn's Force sensitivity in this movie in order to give him some kind of relevance. But they also introduce another character, a female character, who has essentially his same backstory. So they basically take everything special about Finn's character and give it to someone else. No wonder John Boyega hated these fucking movies. Rey eventually makes her way to the Death Star wreckage and finds the Wayfinder. This is where Kylo confronts her and we get our actual first lightsaber duel. It's probably the most emotionless lightsaber duel that they've ever had in Star Wars. And guess what? Kylo Ren loses. He's simply the worst antagonist in Star Wars history. So she basically kills him, but then decides to force heal him anyway because she didn't get to kiss him yet or some shit. Kylo then gets a pep talk from a very well-paid Harrison Ford because that's the only reason he would come back for this bullshit. Leia essentially dies off screen. And this makes way for Poe to become the new general, but of course he needs a pep talk as well, this time from Lando. Then we find Rey on Herman Island and she goes there pretty much to give up. And she gets a pep talk from Force Ghost Luke. So you get a pep talk and you get a pep talk. Everyone gets a pep talk. Force Ghost Luke basically tells Rey that he was wrong for being a little bitch and going to this island to hide. Again, fuck you, Ryan Johnson. And then he proceeds to tell her to do what he did in Return of the Jedi and confront Palpatine. The final battle on Exegol is both visually ridiculous and completely unbelievable. Poe and Finn are entrusted as brilliant military strategists, even though they've never done anything to prove that they are. Finn leads a ground attack with horses riding on top of a Star Destroyer. I know a lot of people have addressed this already, and I don't really need to, but how easy would it be to defend this attack? You ready for it? Just tilt the ship. Anyway, they're all getting their asses kicked, and then this whole fleet of ships just shows up out of nowhere. Where were these assholes when they called them the first time? I have no idea. Finally, Rey goes to confront Palpatine. Kylo is close behind, but he's confronted by the Knights of Ren, who he dispatches pretty quickly. All the mysteries surrounding them, and they basically amounted to nothing more than henchmen. I will say this, when Kylo showed up, part of me thought, or maybe even hoped, this was going to be his redemption story. It would have been repetitive, sure, but at least if he defeats Palpatine, it's a real Skywalker doing it. But of course, that's not what happens. Palpatine pretty much incapacitates Ren pretty quickly, and this is the big finale where Rey hears all the past Jedi calling out to her. Not exactly sure why they wouldn't call out to Ben instead. I know he was just evil and kind of turned back, but he seems like the better choice considering Rey's lineage. Just saying. But anyway, Rey deflects Palpatine's Force Lightning back into him, basically destroying him and stealing Anakin's redemption story. This is when Ben shows up, kisses her, and somehow transfers his life force over into her. So the last Skywalker sacrificed himself to give the last Palpatine life. <sighs> My, how things have changed. So basically, a Palpatine wins Star Wars, but it's okay because this was made in 2019, and in 2019, you can be whatever you want. So Rey basically identifies as a Skywalker because apparently that's just a mantle you can take up now. Rey Skywalker. The dreaded stakes! And she buries Luke and Leia's sabers in the sands of Tatooine, perfectly summing up how Disney and Lucasfilm buried the Skywalkers and this franchise. So thank you, J.J. Abrams, and a little help from Ryan Johnson for killing off our heroes and pissing on their ashes and ruining one of the greatest franchises in cinematic history. You basically had two directors competing with each other, seeing who could be more incompetent, with an evil overlord like Kathleen Kennedy sitting in the back cackling and collecting checks. As fans, we will always have the first six movies to return to so we can get our Star Wars fixed when we need it. These were movies that were made off the passion and ambition of of one man's brilliant ideas before the franchise was turned into a shell of its former self. Disney can decanonize these movies, they can try their best to get back in our good graces, but it doesn't matter. The damage has been done, and if you're anything like me, you don't really consider Disney Star Wars part of canon anyway. You pretty much act like they don't exist. The filmmakers had no regard for continuity, so if Disney can take that approach while making them, we can take that same approach as fans and just choose to ignore them. We all love the Star Wars that George Lucas created, and we always will. No one, not even the overlords at Disney or their lackeys on social media, can ever take that away from us. When it's all said and done, we'll be the ones on the right side of history, and they'll be exposed for the failures that they are. So that's my official one year later 
Vader review of The Rise of Skywalker. Let me know what you thought about all of it in the comments down below. As always, please like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time right here on Real Shift. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Y'all be cool. Right on.